Hi everybody, for this Sonic Pi lesson, uh, we are going to be continuing working with data structures in Sonic Pi, uh, but we are gonna be starting to use some randomization features in Sonic Pi so that we can sort of generate interesting melodies by choosing random notes from arrays that we make and also uh, another data structure which is very specific to music which is something called a scale, so we'll talk about that in a moment, okay? Um, so, just to review, remember an array is, if I play an array, um, an array is using square brackets, a way that I can store a bunch of different values in one single place, in one line of code. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna do uh, a certain number of notes here, and maybe I'll just go one more, like that. Okay, so I got six notes here in my array, all right? So just to review, if I play my array like this, it's gonna give me all the notes at once, okay? Now, remember, if I add dot tick, that will play one note in my array. Okay, and if I want to play uh, all the notes in my array, I need to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to do six dot times do. Okay, remember every do should have an end to go with it. And I need to make sure I have a sleep here. I'm gonna do 0 0.5. So now this will tick through, first time through, it'll play this, second time this, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time. Okay, so those, that was my array of notes. If I go through here, it look, it played 60, then 63, 67, 70, 72, 75, just like my array here, okay? So there is a feature here in Sonic Pi that is different than dot tick. So instead of dot tick, I'm going to write dot choose. All right, so dot choose, what it's going to do is it is going to choose a random number out of these six numbers that I put in the array. Okay, so the first time through, it's gonna choose one of these six numbers, and then the second time through, it's gonna choose one of these six numbers, and then the third time through, it's gonna choose one of these six numbers, seemingly at random. Okay, uh, and computers are very good at generating random patterns and random numbers, so that is something we want to try and utilize uh, if we're going to be using computers and code to make music. Now, just note, when I say it's going to choose one of these six numbers, every time through, it's going to choose one of these six, but that doesn't mean it's going to choose one and then it's not going to choose that another time. So you might get two notes in a row, you might get one note that is not chosen at all, okay? So something to keep in mind. So it's not that it picks one and then it can't choose that number for the rest of the times through. So now let's see what happens. And we'll keep the console close here so we can kind of see how many notes it played. Here we go. All right, so I get this random pattern from the notes. So it chose 72 and then like I said, it chose 72 again. So it's not that it is not gonna choose the same note twice. 70, 67, 63, 60, 70. So it didn't choose 75 in that. All right, now I'm gonna play it again. So let's just keep this in mind. 72, 72, 67, 63, 60, 70. So if you're listening, 72, 72, 67, 63, 60, 70. And I get the same pattern. So you might be wondering, well, what's going on here? That doesn't seem random. It's choosing the same one every time, which is not random. And that is true. Okay, so when we talk about random in Sonic Pi, uh, there's a certain sort of mechanism that's in place in Sonic Pi. The reason being is that since we're making music, let's say you generate a random pattern and you are like, I love this random pattern. I want to keep it. I want to build a song around it. I want to make it a melody in a song. But then you press play again and it gives you a different pattern and you've lost that random pattern forever. Okay, the number of times you could try to do it uh, and get that same pattern is gonna be in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So there's a very slim chance that you would get that pattern again. So the makers of Sonic Pi wanted to make sure that if you get a random thing that you like, that you will be able to keep it and be consistent with that every time. And this way, if I were to send you a copy of this, or if you, when you make yours and you send it to me, I'll hear the same 
random pattern that you heard. So what do I do then if I want a different pattern chosen randomly from these notes? Okay, and that is pretty simple. So above this six times do, I'm gonna write use underscore random underscore C. And you see it already auto-completing, okay? So this is basically just like choose a different random pattern. Now the thing I need to do is though, I need to add uh, a number here. So let's say I add use random seed one. Okay, so this time I get a different series of notes. I get 72 at the beginning. Okay, I get 72 at the end. I have some other notes in between. So now let's try maybe use random seed six. Okay, so this time I get a different pattern here. Okay, this one had three 72s in it. Let me try random seed 13. Okay, let me try random seed 28. Try random seed 347. Uh, and I could go, I could go in the thou, you know, I could do this random seed. Okay, now eventually I'm gonna run out of, uh, you know, I could do a huge long number here. You'll probably wind up repeating uh, the possibilities, but you'll never, it'll be very surprising if you did this and then maybe like random seed this and got the same pattern. So even though you might wind up having duplicates, a very slim chance of that happening. Now let me just point out, we always want to have use random seed before the dot times do, not after. Because if you have it bef after, it's just going to pick the same note over and over and over again. It's just going to pick whatever the first note would be in that pattern. So always make sure you have the use random seed before the number of times. Now, let's say I have one, two, three, four, five, six notes, but I want a pattern that's 12 notes long. Okay, that will work. Okay, this is not like using dot tick with your arrays. So you can have as many notes as you want, and every time it's just going to choose one of these six notes. Okay, so it doesn't, you don't have to have any matchup between the number of times and the number of notes in your way. So this time, all right, so there you go. So I have that and then maybe I wanna like copy and paste this and I wanna make maybe a different pattern with these notes. Maybe this one is eight. I'm gonna actually do use synth just so we can hear when it changes from one to the other. So use synth, maybe I'll do the, uh, I don't know, the Hoover. Okay, so this we'll hear this random seed and then we'll hear this random seed chosen from these notes. There you heard two different patterns. I added a synth there as well, okay? So that is uh, how we can choose random notes from an array. So there is now, I'm gonna just comment this out for a minute so it won't play. So there is another way that I can generate random melodies using a different data structure, and that is something called a scale. Now, if you've played any music before, you've probably heard a scale. So a scale is like a series of notes that are put together, and when you take notes from the scale and put them in different patterns, that's usually how melodies are made, okay? So you've probably all heard like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, that is what's called a major scale. So those are all the notes in a major scale, all right? So the way that we make a scale, okay, I'm gonna do play, and then I'm gonna write S-C-A-L-E, scale. Now, inside of the scale, I need to, after that, I need to do parentheses, okay? So a scale takes two arguments, two things I have to put in with the scale. The first is the starting note, okay? So I am gonna say, let's start it at 50, okay? Then I have to put a comma, and right after that, you see suddenly this whole drop down menu comes down. These are all the different scales that are built into Sonic Pi, okay? So there are a lot of scales that we have to work with, and each one of these is just a different series of notes, a different combination of notes, okay? So I'm gonna go down the one I was just talking about, the major scale here, okay? Now, scale should always have the colon in front. All right, so if I have play, it starts at 50, it does this. If I run it, it kills sort of this muddy sound. Why? 
because it played all the notes in the scale at once. So you can see all those notes right there. So similar to uh, an array or a ring, I can do dot tick. That is only going to give me the number of no one note in the scale. Okay, let me just see. Now, if we do, you do, if you want to hear the scale in its entirety, okay, I can see here it tells me all the notes. It's not super important, but just to show you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know in this major scale there are eight notes. So if I did want to go through this and hear every note, I could do dot times do, I could do need an end again I'll sleep for 0 0.5 and then I would do dot tick and this will be that do re me that I was talking about all right so there I just ticked through the scale from beginning to end just to show you this beginning number could also be maybe a note so I could do like e4 Okay, the starting note will affect the pitch, how high or how low all the notes in the scale. So if I were to lower that note, all the notes would be lower. Now I'm just going to change this from major to another very commonly used scale, which is called a minor scale, and you'll hear it change slightly. Okay, I'm going to delete all that. Here's just a trick. Since uh, you can sort of go back to the comma and hit space, you can also hold shift and click the space bar and that will bring up this as well. So I'm going to go maybe this Chinese scale. Okay, so in that case we heard it go back to the beginning. So probably one, two, three, four, five, six, I think six notes in that scale and that goes back. So if I do it eight times, I'm just ticking through. It's going to go back to the beginning again. But here's the thing, dot tick not really how we want to work with scales. We want to work with scales by choosing random notes out of the scale to try and make a melody because a scale played from beginning to end is going to be pretty boring and not going to give us an interesting melody. So I'm going to do, instead of dot tick with this scale, I'm going to do dot choose. Okay, so that gives me a melody. All right, uh, again, I could change the pitch and that'll give me a slightly higher pitched Now, same thing as I was doing with the array, I just add use random seed, and I try a different pattern here. Okay, so maybe I find something I like. I could change the numbers a little bit. Okay, I could change the number of times. Maybe I want it to happen 16. Maybe I want to increase the speed of it. Maybe I want to change the scale again. Uh, so again, there's like tons of them here. I highly recommend you play around with a bunch, see what happens, see Watto maybe. Okay, so again, I have that. Then I could copy and paste and just sort of maybe do something slightly different. Okay, I'm gonna maybe do 575. Maybe I'll make it like 13 notes. Uh, maybe I will change this to a number. So maybe like 70 and do a different scale here. Let's try. So this is just me kind of playing around and how I can do different sort of things here. Let's try this uh, hex Dorian and then I will do just a different synth. So use synth just so we can sort of clearly hear the change from one to the other auto complete there and let's do i don't know this mod try so here we go all right so so I got something working here. Again, I could undo this now, and then I have all this different stuff happening. Maybe I'll do one more use synth so that Hoover doesn't carry over, uh, by which I mean, since I change the synth here, this one is gonna have it only. I'll go to like chip bass here. Okay, so here's now, uh, I have a bunch of different scales and melodies using arrays and uh, whatnot, so let's hear it. So 
mean, I could play around with this and kind of mold it to get something I want, but this now showing how I can sort of use uh, some random features to generate some ideas instead of me having to think about every single note in the order of it. I use the random seed to change it, the number of notes I want in my pattern, and what I want in my pattern. Okay, so this just gives you a bunch of different examples and helps you generate ideas in a different way instead of just kind of randomly typing numbers to see what happens. This will sort of do some of that randomness for you and then you can just kind of play around with the random seed and find something that you like. All right, so that is what this week's project is gonna be. So just generate some random melodies using arrays and using scales and changing them using uh, the use random seed and the number of notes in each pattern with the dot times due, okay? So I've put together this little reference sheet. So this kind of covers everything that I just talked about using dot choose uh, with arrays, using random seed to change the order, it gets into scales, the two things that you need in your scale, right? And then how to use uh, the dot choose. It talks about dot tick, but again, you don't wanna use dot tick with that. There's just a checklist of what to do for the project. So basically just making random melodies uh, with arrays and scales using dot choose, use random seed and the dot times do, okay? So once you've done that, you copy and paste your code. So again, just highlight your code. If you're using a Mac, hold command and press C. If you're using a Windows, hold control, press C, and then just go, or again, if you're gonna do this for the music engagement assignment, uh, then just copy and paste your code here in the bottom, all right? And then just write your name, your choice, okay? Uh, Sonic Pi, this would be the Creating Random Melodies lesson, and that would be it. So looking forward to see what you're able to make using these random